one of the things people don't understand about Nazism and fascism, we, we teach in schools about fascism and Nazism as this ultimate evil, the ultimate monster in human history. And at some level, this is, this is wrong because it makes people, um, it actually ex exposes us. Why? Because people hear, oh, fascism is this monster. And then when you hear the actual fascist story, what fascists tell you is always very beautiful and attractive. Fascists are people who come and tell you, you are wonderful. You belong to the most wonderful group of people in the world. You are beautiful. You are ethical. Everything you do is good. You have never done anything wrong. There are all these evil monsters out there that are out to get you, and they are causing all the problems in the world. And when people hear that, you know, it's like looking in the mirror and seeing something very beautiful. Hey, I'm beautiful. I've, we've never done anything wrong. We are victims. Everybody is, and, and when you look and you heard in school that fascism, that fascists are monsters, and you look in the mirror, you see something very beautiful. And you say, I can't be a fascist because fascists are monsters, and this is so beautiful, so it can't be. But when you look in the fascist mirror, you, all, you never see a monster. You see the most beautiful thing in the world. And that's the danger. This is the problem, you know, with Hollywood's... You know, I look at Voldemort in Harry Potter. Who would like to follow this, this creep? Yeah. And you look at Darth Vader. This is not somebody you would like to follow. Christianity got things much better when it described the devil as being very beautiful and attractive. That's the danger, that you see something as very beautiful, you don't understand the monster underneath. And you write precisely about this. And by the way, it's just a small aside. It, um, it always saddens me when people say how obvious it is to them that communism is a flawed ideology. When you ask them, try to put your mind, try to put yourself in the beginning of the 20th century and see what you would do. A lot of people will say, it's obvious that it's a flawed ideology. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I suppose to some of the worst ideologies in human history, you could say the same. And in that mirror, when you look, it looks beautiful. It, communism is the same. Also, you look in the communist mirror, you're the most ethical, wonderful place a person ever. <laughs> it's very difficult to see Stalin underneath it. So, yeah, in Homodeus, you also write, during the 19th and 20th centuries, as humanism gained increasing social credibility and political power, it sprouted two very different offshoots. Socialist humanism, which encompassed a plethora of socialist and communist movements, and evolutionary humanism, whose most famous advocates were the Nazis. So if you can just linger on that, what's the ideological connection between Nazism and communism as embodied by humanism? And humanism basically is, you know, the, the focus is on humans, that they are the most important thing in the world. They move history. But then there is a big question, what is, what are humans? What is humanity? Now, liberals, they, place at the center of the story individual humans, and they don't see history as a kind of necessary collision between big forces. They place the individual at the center. If you want to know, you know, there is a bad, uh, uh, um, especially in the US today, liberal is taking, taken as the opposite of, of conservative. But it's to test whether you're liberal, you need to answer just three questions. Very simple. Uh, do you think people should have the right to choose their own government or uh, uh, the government should be imposed by some outside force? Uh, do you think people should have the right to the liberty to choose their own profession or either born into some caste that predetermines what they do? And do you think people should have the liberty to choose their own spouse and their own way of personal life? instead of being told by elders or parents who to marry and how to live. Now, if you answered yes to all three questions, people should have the liberty to choose their government, their profession, their personal lives, their spouse, then you're a liberal. And most conservatives are also liberal. Now, communists and fascists, they answer differently. For them, 
history is not yes history is about humans humans are the big heroes of history but not individual humans and their liberties uh, fascists imagine history as a clash between races or nations the nation is at the center they say the supreme good is the good of the nation you should have a hundred percent loyalty only to the nation you know liberals say yes you should be loyal to the nation but it's not the only thing there are other things in the world there are human rights there is truth there is beauty many times yes you should prefer the interests of your nation over other things but not always if your nation tells you to murder millions of innocent people you don't do that even though the nation tells you to do it um when to to lie for the national interest you know in extreme situations maybe but in some, in many cases your loyalty should be to the truth even if it makes your nation looks a bit not 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 in the best light the same with beauty you know how does a fascist determine whether a movie is a good movie very simple if it serves the interest of the nation this is a good movie if it's against the interest of the nation this is a bad movie end of story liberalism says no there is a, a, a aesthetic values in the world uh we should judge movies not just on that question whether they serve the national interest but also on artistic value communists are a bit like the fascists instead that they don't place the nation as the main hero they place class as the main hero for them history again it's not about individuals it's not about nations history is a clash between classes and just as fascists imagine in the end only one nation will be on top the communists think in the end only one class should be on top and that's the the, the proletariat and same story the your a hundred percent of your loyalty should be to the class and like if you if there is a clash say between class and family class wins like in the soviet union the party told children if you hear your parents say something bad about stalin you have to report them and there are many cases when children reported their parents and their parents were sent to the gulag like and you know your loyalty is to the party to the which leads the proletariat to victory in the historical struggle and the same way in communism art is only about class struggle a movie is good if it serves the interests of the proletariat artistic values there is nothing like that and the same with with truth the everything that we see now in fake news uh, uh you know the communist propaganda machine was there before us the level of 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 of, of lies of disinformation campaigns that they orchestrated in the 1920s and 30s and 40s is is really un, un, unimaginable so the reason these two ideologies classes of ideologies failed as the sacrifice of truth not just failed but did a lot of damage as the sacrifice of truth and sacrifice of beauty and sacrifice of hundreds of millions of people disregard again for human suffering like okay for in order to for for our nation to win in order for our class to win we need to kill those millions kill those millions Th that was an ethics aesthetics uh, uh truth they don't matter the only thing that matter is the victory of the state or the victory of the class and that the, the, and liberalism was the antithesis to that it says no not only it's uh, it, it 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 has a much more complicated view of the world and growth communism and fascism they are the very simple view of the world there is one uh, uh your loyalty 100% of it should be only to one thing now liberalism has a much more complex view of the world it says yes there are nations they are important yes there are classes they are important but they are not the only thing there are also families there are also um uh, uh, individuals there are also animals and your loyalty should be divided between all of them sometimes you prefer this sometimes you prefer that that's complicated and but you know life is complicated but also i think uh maybe you can correct me but liberalism acknowledges the corrupting nature of power when there's a guy in the, at the top mm. sits there for a while 
managing things uh, is probably going to start losing um, a good sense of reality and, and losing the capability to be a good manager. It yep. feels like the uh, communist and uh, fascist regimes don't acknowledge that basic uh, characteristic of human nature that power corrupts. Yes, they believe in infallibility. Yeah. Uh, they are in, in this sense, they are very close to being religions. The, in Nazism, Hitler was considered infallible. And therefore, you don't need any checks and balances on his power. Why do you need to balance an infallible genius? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the Soviet Union, in Stal with Stalin and more generally with the, with the Communist Party. The party can never make a mistake. And therefore, you don't need independent courts, independent media, opposition parties, things like that, because the party is never wrong. You concentrate the same way 100% of loyalty should be to the party, 100% of power should be in the hands of the party. The whole idea of liberal democracy is embracing fallibility. Everybody is fallible. All people or leaders or political parties or institutions, this is why we need checks and balances and we need many of them. If you have just one, then this particular check itself could make terrible mistakes. So you need, say, a, 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 you need a press, you need the media to serve as a check to the government. You don't have just one newspaper or one TV station. You need many so that they can balance each other. And the media is not enough. So you have independent courts, you have free academic institutions, you have NGOs, you have a lot of checks and balances.